Good morning, Paulo. Hi, everyone. Good, good morning, Lisandro. <laughs> Welcome to the second day of your fourth conference on statistics and data science. We are so glad to your company today. Thank you again for coming. Uh, this is the second day of the conference. Yesterday, we had a very long day. We had a, a keynote speaker by Alexandra Smith. We have a very nice round table on the job market on statistics and data science. Uh, you are very welcome to, if you didn't see, you should go and watch it on, on YouTube. And then in the afternoon, we have the two courses that they are also available on, 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 on our channel in YouTube. One on, on uh, reproducible reports by Julie Tresenti and one about interval data by Paula Brito and Pedro Silva. And then in the end of the day, we had a long poster session. We had almost 100 posters being presented. So it was a very long day and now we are ready for the second day. Today, we have, uh, we have a keynote talk, a, a round table. Uh, it will be a shorter day than yesterday uh, so that we can, we can breathe a little bit. Uh, so. Uh, that's a welcome to, to, to this second day of the conference. Yes, I hope you had uh, enjoyed the event yesterday. It was amazing. And uh, uh, today we start the second day of the DCSDS 2022. I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, who is a reference in IT response theory and educational assessment in Brazil. He has published a lot of papers with national and international remarkable research. So, he has a successful academic career, which has inspired a lot of young researchers 
to propose this area. The invited speaker is Dr. Delton Andrade, who obtained a degree in mathematics and master in statistics from the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, and a PhD in biostatistics from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, USA. At the moment, he is professor at the Federal University of Santa Catarina, work in graduate programs of the Department of Production Engineer and Department of Informatics and Statistics. His presentation is called Statistical Methods in Educational Assessment, Theory, Applications, Computational Aspect, and the Challenges. I'd like to thank and welcome Dr. Andrade for uh, accepting our invitation. The floor is now yours. Thank you. Oh, good morning, Lisandra. Thank you very much for your words. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'd like to thank you and the scientific committee for the invitation for this opportunity to talk about a topic that I like most. <laughs> So I will start my presentation. Good morning, Paulo Tura. Okay, as Lissandra told, uh, uh, I'll talk a little bit. So I, I'd like to, to give you, to take this opportunity to, to present you an overall view how statistics can help educational assessment and how educational assessment can help statistics. So my talk will be divided in a short introduction and how measuring proficiency, understanding, explaining proficiency and challenge. So how to measure proficiency? So this is uh, uh, what, what we have. Uh, we have a, a, a general concept that is what is latent trace. So it's something that we cannot observe uh, directly. So we need uh, a measurement instrument like a questionnaire or test and a metric, a scale to represent this, this measure. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to talk mostly on the education assessment. So, uh, example of late trade trace in this case assessment would be proficiency in Portuguese, proficiency in mathematics, and so on. But you no, know, we can use this item response theory to measure late trade trace in many different areas, like degree of satisfaction quality of life, diagnostic reasoning level in nursing, uh, quality risk, quality of food consumption in nutrition, uh, level of usability on the web, propensity to evasion students, graduate, undergraduate students, and so on. So uh, Mostly we are going to talk about proficiency, but you know, we can use this, the whole modules or everything that is present here, you can use in this many, many different areas and I'll show you some application on that. So, first of all, the measurement instrument. So this, this is not related to statistics. So they have to be elaborated by experts on the subject. So someone that understands maths, and so we can build um, the tests of mathematics and so on. But, and this is important to know, that, that the, uh, the, the instrument, the measuring instrument, they can be composed, they are composed of items or questions. We, uh, we, we, we say also items. Uh, and the items can be of different types. They can be dichotomous, like yes or no, right or wrong, agree, disagree. But they can be polytomous, ordinal, like Likert scale. It goes from totally disagree to totally agree. 
can be polytomous nominal, multiple multiple choice items like we have in our national exam and name. And they also can be open items. And the open item, they have to be corrected and they can be correct as dichotomous or polytomous ordinal. And we can have different types of items in the same questionnaire in the same test. And the scale, the metric that, so this is, we can say that this is a process through which numbers are assigned to objects. Here there is something important. What I'm talking about objects are the items and the respondents. So we can no, we can develop a measure to measure the, the, the respondents' proficiency, but we, we also would like to, to measure the items' proficiency. In the items, they can have different levels of the relating trait. Okay, so let me introduce you the item response theory, IRT. So the measure, usually the people say score, but for us it will be the proficiency. The scale will be a set of real numbers. So here it is not just the number of the right items or something like that, but to be, we will have to define a set of the real numbers to represent the proficiency. And it's not test dependent, so we can have the same for different tests, different size, different items. We can have the, 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 uh, the measure does not depend on that. And item response here is basically is a set of probabilities, probability, probabilistic model. And depends on the item type, you have a different probabilistic model. For instance, this three parameters logistic model. This is the model that is uh, used in no, in our national exam, and then. So it, it is proper to model when you have multiple choice items. So have the item, have different categories of response, and one is right and the other one is wrong, are wrong. So, and we have three parameters so in this model. We call difficulty parameter. I prefer to say the location or the the proficiency of the item, because you see that this parameter uh, is represented on the same scale of proficiency. The discrimination parameter, this measures the quality of the item. And as you have a multiple choice item, so people can, uh, can go, uh, respond the right category even if the responder does know the, 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 the ability, what is, uh, the item is measuring, because, you know, you can just do this by chance, by guessing. And also, the, the item parameter, they do not depend on the respondent. So we have the item parameter independent of the respondent. So this is the three parameter logistic model. So here you have the probability of right answer that depends on the parameter of the, this is the proficiency of the respondent so this is really related to the respondent and the three items parameter a b and c as defined before so this is a logistic model and this is the item we call item characteristic curve of the item. So here you have the proficiency in this scale, and where zero is the mean of the, prof, the, the mean of the, the, the respondent's proficiency, and one is the standard deviation. I'll talk a little bit more later. So we have the proficiency here, and here you have the probability of guessing. 
the, the right, not sorry, probability of the right uh, response. And we can see that people uh, respond that uh, the higher the proficiency, the higher the probability. So this is a, a type of the group. So and the, so the 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 A, the, the A parameter, the discriminant parameters relate to the to this uh, inclination of the, the the curve. Okay. And we can from this model we can generate two other models. What we call two parameter logistic model when we don't have guessing like yes or no, agree or disagree. So we have this will go down here, the C will be zero, and the model will be just this part here. And also we can have all the items, they can have the same discrimination. So we don't need the A parameter to differentiate the, the item discrimination. Okay, this is related to what they call also the, the rash model. Here we have in this definition here, we have, so you can see that you have the proficiency parameter here, and this is the location or, or the proficiency item. So we have this minus here, so they have to be on the same scale. So this is what we, this is the most important thing. So at the end, we have the respondents and the items on the same scale. That's why we saw that B in this proficiency scale here, B is 0 0.75. Okay, so we can have we can we can have the same respondent res, responding same item we can represent the same the, this probability in different ways so if you have if we do this linear transformation here we'll see that the probability will be the same so the same respondent okay so we can represent the same respondent and the respondent the same items in different ways of so in different scales. Also, what I'm saying is that we can use, we might use this scale, we call zero, 1. Or if you do the transformation, we multiply by 10, 100, then, and add 500, we will have this scale. So 0 here will be represented here by 500. 1, 600. They'll be the same thing. So what do we call an identity? non-identifiability. So we have to, to decide which scale we want to have our results. In terms of computational aspects, it's much better to do the whole thing using the 0, 1 scale, and after that, you can do the, the linear transformation. So that's why... Uh, because in terms of co computational aspects, it's much easier to work, to start to work on the, the zero one scale and after that make the transformation. So what we have to do? We have to estimate the parameters of the items. So in the model, we have the items parameter and the proficiency. We, in general, we use two steps. First, we estimate the item parameters, what they call calibration. You, the most usual method is the marginal maximum likelihood. When we, and then the high clue, we, in, we, we add the assumption that the proficiency comes from a normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. And we 
estimate the item parameters. With the item parameters estimated, we estimate the proficiency. And the most usual method for that is expect a posterior, EAP. So that is, of course, here we have part of the, the, the challenge. Now you have different, you can propose different methods for the estimation of the parameters. So we have a lot of work uh, going on on this subject here. To do that, we need computational resources. So uh, there are commercial software and, and what I like to, to work most is using the package MIRT, M-I-R-T, in the R. And I think this is, it covers all we need. That's what I suggest, that's all. The computational aspect, you can uh, do it with uh, this package MIRT. So, I develop a question uh, treating uh, that deal with the, the person's height as a, a latent trait. A bit of question uh, with 14 uh, dichotomous items, yes or no. I use the 2PL, the two parameter logistic model. I applied that to 200 and 100 And I got, <coughs> uh, and from that, I got the, the I built the, 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 this, the, this measurement, person high, and I built this scale here, in the zero one scale. So what I'm showing here is that here we have the items positioned on the scale. This is the the, the, the item with the lowest uh, height. <laughs> Can we store luggage in the trunk of the, the plane? Uh, we are inside the airplane, and you have to, to, to put, to store your luggage on the track. And the highest level, uh, item, the highest height item, uh, do you bend down when do going through a door? So we can see that. So I have all the, the are you, I will share with you this, my files here, and, and you can see that, uh, uh, and doing that, um, okay, I think I can, I mean, share. Uh, I got the, 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 the answers from the respondents, and with, with the 14 answers, I, I built the scale, but also I asked people to tell me the, 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 uh, his uh, height in meters. So this is the real value. And what we got here is that this is the relation between the, what uh, <clears throat> I got using IRT, and this is the real height. Okay, and we see that the, the, the correlation between uh, the real height and the IRT height will be 0 0.80, so not bad measurement. Okay, so this is just a way of using IRT in different forms. <laughs> And we have many models. For, for instance, you have this, what they call nominal model, when you have the multiple choice item at, at the name of national exam, they correct as wrong, right or wrong. Does not depend the, 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 the category, the, what the, the, the respondent, the not, not the correct one. But if you want the models, if you want to model all the, the response category, you can use this model here. So you can see that here, the B parameter is item I, but the S category. 
and this should be the item uh, character score. A model all, for instance, you have four categories. And we see that this regulatory trends, the category you have the highest when people that are high uh, proficiency, the late trade state, this is the category to uh, the probability to write, right probability. So it will be the third category. Now, what is uh, in, 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 in IoT applications in different areas, it's most common to, to have great what we call ordinal polytomous items. And this is the most, uh, I think it is the best model, IoT model, the model that they call graded response model. In fact, the, the, the Samejima was the author of this model, proposed this model. And, uh, she considered the two logistic, two, two parameter logistic model and did some uh, this, uh, this composition of them. And here you have that the, 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 the location, uh, the difficult parameter, they follow in an order, so they are ordinal. And here uh, you have the four uh, interpretation of the four categories, but here we say that this one is the highest category. Okay, and we have partial credit model is the graded response model considering the same discrimination parameter for all items. We have graded scale model, and we, we have for the, the, the items category, the para, item param, parameter category, we have this representation here. We have, if, if you have students followed a long time, you can have longitudinal model, and this is what I say that how um, I say that education assessment can help statistics, because this was a work done by Tavares, his uh, doctoral dissertation, and he proposed a model to mo to model so that the, the dependence of the 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 latency of the respondent a long time. So there are two, uh, so this, this are two publications that was got from a challenge from education assessment for statistics. We can have multi-dimensional multi model, I'll talk a little bit. And also what they call non-cumulative model. What I'm saying about that. This is the model. I'm sorry. This is what I say is, is that um, it's non cumulative because that the highest the proficiency, the highest the probability of right venture. So this is a cumulative model. But to have some, some in some situations, we don't have the later trace, it's not cumulative. This is on um, application of that, this model. <clears throat> this is, I think this can be severe here. Uh, the latest trace here is level of abortion acceptance. And there's an item that says, my feelings about abortion are very mixed. And you have six ordinal categories, totally disagree, we totally agree. So if you have a person with high level of abortion, of abortion acceptance, this person will disagree, totally disagree with this item because he is, he accepts the abortion. So it's not, 
his feeling you know, and not mix it. But if we have a person with lower level of abortion acceptance, this person also you totally disagree with that because he's against <coughs> abortion. So, so you can see that, it's, that this is not cumulative. Okay, they call this model are called uh, proximity models. <coughs> so we have many and many models can talk more, and also you can propose new models too. <coughs> One interesting is that when we are trying to to evaluate you know, the educational assessment, we like, for example, this national exam, yeah, and then we have, uh, for math proficiency, so we have <coughs> a test, <coughs> sorry, has built 45 items. So all the respondents, <coughs> they have to respond 45 items. But as we have more, millions of respondents to have responded with different, totally different levels of proficiency. So that's the reason we have to, to present you no know, many, many items just to, to, to make sure that we can uh, estimate the proficiency, to measure the proficiency for the different respondents. But that is a way we can deal with that, what we call computer adaptive testing, CAT. Let me show you what I'm saying that. And this is an example that I got the real string, the, respond, the respondent uh, answer for the 45 items. And this uh, respondent, uh, he got the proficiency 739.8 based on his 45 answers. I did the simulation here and showing that what I'm showing here, what I'm showing is that instead of presenting the 45 items together, I did different. I choose one item, because this is the number 662, okay? And I watched the English respondent, <clears throat> what was his answer to that item? And when I have the blue color here, is that this that he answered correctly that item. Okay, so I choose a second item called seven eight, and he also uh, responded correctly that item. So here I'm selecting choosing items and see what was the respondent. Uh, answer to that this was right or wrong. And after each response, I estimate the respondent's proficiency. So the real proficiency is represented here. And these are the proficiency I'm getting after the respondent's answer. Okay? So, as you can see, at this point, when I select this item here, 48, his answer was wrong, and so on. So, you see that we are close to the real value. If you see from, from this point here, all the items, do, they don't have more information about the proficiency 
the response is proficient. So if we had, for example, one test only with these items here, for instance, we will get basically the same proficiency that, you know, was uh, obtained with the 45 answers. So we can present uh, a shorter test and get the same answer, the same measure of proficiency. Okay, and I did this for the the other so three different tests. So here we have uh, the representation of we got. So you can see that when you do uh, write this point uh, sort of twenty five items, we also got you know because here what I'm showing is that th these are the items presented for this. Responder. This uh, the items present for this one, and this are the odds. So the three different respondents, because they have different proficiencies, they got. I could present a shorter test, but different tests for each one, and basically we reproduce the same, the same measure, proficiency measure. So that's what we call. Uh, so here we have some challenge how to select the next items, how to back that. So this will be the statistics, the, the statistic contribution for this type of uh, <clears throat> test. Okay, so this is the idea of how to measure proficiency. Now, we know a second important point in the educational assessment is try to understand why the students, they have different proficiency. Even the students at the same school, at the same class, try to understand that, understanding that we can propose some different uh, <coughs> ways of of teaching and uh, so that's the idea. So, so, and how to can we understand explain proficiency? So, have the whole student together the total variability. If you have them looking them for so each school they belong to. So here you have the students. They are not so much different as the other one. But here you have different schools, and we would also have at same school different class. So the students they are what we call they are hierarchical. You have clusterings. So the best way to understand to explain students' proficiency is try to consider those clusters. And how can we deal with that? Using what we call hierarchical or multi-level modules. Okay? In fact, they are, they are mixed modules, but they are treated as this name here because they're specific when they start using that for the educational assessment. So what to have different levels using, based on the, the, the clusters I showed you. you. I use only two levels here to show you. So, what we have the new model, we model, we have a student level, we have the proficiency of the student, IT student, the school J. So this is the overall proficiency mean of the school J plus random component, so student level, and you have here, so the proficiency mean for each school. And then at that, the school level, we we'll try to model this expected value this mean as an overall proficiency mean plus some random component. 
So this will be the, the compounded new model. So we have a general mean, proficiency mean, and a uh, school effect, sort of, and the student one. Two. So when we do this one, we we have the correlation, okay, among students in the same school. This is uh, just an example. Now you have, you could call, this is the total variability, 10,000. But when we, you look at these two components here, we can see that this total variability, part of this is related to school and part is related to students. Okay? So what we want to do, if this is important, how to explain that students in the same school, they are different, okay? The students tend to they are different, and why the schools are different, this variability here. So we, we use in the models, what we call student variabilities, to try to understand why students they are having different proficiencies. For instance, this is just an example. We have a lot of student variabilities. So this age lag, so if the student, the, the real student age and the proper student age for that uh, school year, Okay, so what we what we know from the studies that we have had, we had is that uh, a student with um, age lag different from zero, they have lower proficiency. They in general, so this will be the proficiency mean school for the student with age lag zero. This we have. And this is what is important, age lag effect in school J and the real component. This is student level. When do we do that? And we assume that the age, age lag effect is the same in all schools. We have this second level here. Here we are considering only student level, student variable, sorry. So this will be the but we can assume that the age effect, the age lag effect is not the same in all schools. So here we can pose, so this is different. We, we, we are considering also random effect here. Okay? That will be, this will be the, the component model Consider only student variable. But now, let's say that we have a school variable now. We call a level of commitment of the pedagogical team at school J. And this is a categorical variable, high, medium, and low, for instance. So here we can try to explain because the... <coughs> sorry. The age lag effect vary from school to school. But we are saying that not the comp random component here. When we do this, we have this component model here. So here we have an interaction between this level of commitment of pedagogical team and the age lag. So here we try, so what we are trying to do is try to explain here with age, age lag, and here using the um, level of commitment of the pedagogical team, okay? So this is the idea of uh, hierarchical modeling or multi-level modeling, okay? So, in many situations, it's very important to treat proficiency as categorical, not, uh, not real numbers. 
it's easier to explain to to people from education. So it's quite common to treat the proficiencies as in four categories, below basic, basic, adequate, and adversity. So to do this one, so now the dependent, the dependent verb here is not continuous anymore, will be categorical. So you have to use hierarchical ordinal logistic model. Okay? Now, one thing that is very important is that why try to understand to more um, uh, what variables are more related to a student with the low proficiency because you know you, you want to to define some politics to deal with that those special for the student with the low proficiency so this one we we'll use the the you must use the what we call hierarchical quantile models and this is a, a paper that shows them. So, as you see, depending on the way you are try, to try to understand, to measure, to understand the proficiency, to have to have different hierarchical models. Of course, here we consider only two levels, the student level and the school level, but we could have an intermediate, intermediate, we could have class model to class level too. Sorry, depends on the data you have. Now we can use IRT to create what we call to create the students and school variables. For instance, I have this is two, two works here. That this one we got the, the data from. INEP is our National Institute for Educational Research. It's a Ministry of Education. They have, we have a lot of data. They, they are available. And we got the data to build the scale to measure the school infrastructure. And this also is a, we have a, graduate program here, it's a master program at the University, Federal University of Santa Catarina. This was used the IRT to build an indicator of the socioeconomic level of the students. Okay, now let me talk a little bit about challenge. Equating. We, in most of the situation, we will have to present different tests for the students, depending on the school grade level they have, but we want to have all the results on the same scale. Okay? For instance, here we call Sayabi is our... Um, assessment for the basic education in Brazil. And this is uh, the result. So we have a long time. So this is from 95 to 15. But we have also 17th and 19th. Okay. And here you have the proficiency mean in Brazil. Like this is language, Portuguese, okay? So we have, this is the proficiency mean in language in Brazil a long time. And, but this is for the initial years of the fundamental, or we call the fifth year, the school year here. Here we have the same for the end of the fundamental. And here we have 
the end of the high school. Okay, a long year. And they are on the same scale. So these values here, they are on the same scale. But, you know, to measure the proficiency for this student for the, the, the fifth school year, who have to present tests, one test. For the, for the end of the fundamental, we have to present a different test. And at the end, for the end of the high school, we have to present a different test. Because they measure different levels of proficiency. Okay? So how can we do that? Using the IRT models, we can do that when we have different tests, but if we use, if we, we have some common items among the different tests, we can get the whole, the whole measure on the same scale. Okay, that is, so that's why we have to use the IRT. Only IRT allows that. And this is for math. Uh, another challenge. So this is so you have here we have a computation aspects and uh, different ways of estimating the parameters. So here we have some statistical challenge to do that, to deal with that. The same we have this we we'll call diff, differential item functioning. This is an important thing, no? Because when you use this, no? the, the, the probability, the, that model, so we, as, we assume that the students with the same proficiency, they have the same probability to answer an, an item. If a student with the same probability Presenting different, the same, same proficiency, sorry, same proficiency, present different probability to answer the same out item because they belong to different groups. For instance, region or sex or race. So it depends the way the, the, the item is built. So this is not allowed to do. So we have to check. When you have like the, our national exam, we have people all around Brazil. So we can make sure that we don't have items with this. So we have to have statistical methods to check to test for the this. Okay? So when we have this one, we have to eliminate the items because, because you know, they, the, the test is generated uh, proficiency uh, measurement that are not adequate, not because of the proficiency of the respondent, but because of other characteristics. So the item have to be eliminated. Hi, Dalton. You... Yes, you have more four minutes. <laughs> for me, okay, okay, okay. So as a... Uh, Okay, but I, 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 uh, people, they have the whole slides and the whole file, okay? So, but when you have the, the, but in some situations, we might have to model the, the, the items with this. And this is a paper, so this is a, a, a statistical challenge that was uh, doing this work, how to, create an IRT model to deal with that, okay? Open items have to write, have to be corrected for the, by different correctors, and this is how to deal with that. So this is, they are all statistical models developed uh, based on this uh, educational assessment challenge. Dimensionality, missing data, which is very important to deal with, 
And here, when you have this, uh, uh, for the, 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 try to understand, explain the proficiency, uh, this uh, hierarchical model, we have questionnaires to get information about students at better schools. And most of the questionnaires will have missing data. We don't have to deal with it. Uh, one important method to do this is the multiple imputation method. Fraud detection, we have to have statistical methods to deal with that. We have a, in our this uh, Congress, Congress 2018, was the main topic of that. And here we have at the Federal University of Santa Catarina, we have a graduate program at engineering production. And we have created also what we call the lab of cost and measure. When you have a lot of uh, students, master and doctoral degree and postdoctoral student too, they have to do a lot of work and do those are some publications. They have a different areas. That's it. Okay. Are you stop? Sorry. Okay. Hi, Dalton. <laughs> Thank you for your Thanks. presentation. I I think it was so interesting. It is so interesting this area. I admire so so much your 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 area. This theory. Uh, um, I think response, response uh, theory and uh, the application was uh, interesting. And uh, I'd like to know if is there some uh, study that um, compared the performance of the um, girls and boys um, uh, in the um, math tests. I don't know if it is some uh, this okay. kind of studies. Okay, Lisanda, uh, this, this is important thing is that when when I talked about diff, differential item function, we test for sex, girls, girls and boys. Okay, but we are not saying that uh, the boys or and the girls they have to have the same proficiency. Um. Okay, we are not saying that. We are saying that if you have a boy and a girl with the same proficiency, they have to have the same probability to answer correctly on item. Mm. If this is not true, it's because the item has something that was built that considers a different later trace besides the proficiency to be answered. Mm. So that's the point. For, for instance, it's quite common when you do maths comparison with sex, the boys go a little bit better. And when you do language, the girls do, do, do a little bit better. But this oh. is not this. Okay? It's not the same. It's not the same. Exactly. Oh. This is quite important. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Dalton. It was a great pleasure to see you again, to, to, to host you in, in our meeting. Uh, it was a very nice talk. Uh, we don't have time for more questions, but if anyone has any questions for Dalton, uh, I'm sure that you can write him an email and he'll yes, be sure. pleased to answer, right? Yes, and share the, the material I showed yes. here too. Yes, if okay. you'd like, you, you can send it to me or to Lisandra, and we can put it, in, we can put it okay. in, the, in the website. Okay, okay, okay. Dalton. I'll do that right now. <laughs> thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. So. Uh, we we right. will continue now with the round table in, in, the, in, the, in the room that I'm, I'm putting in the, in the chat. So please uh, uh, feel free to join. See you. Bye-bye. See you soon.